Well, yeah, Jordan doesn't know the sieves. That's definitely true. We'll see. Uh, we have Burmese for Jordan 23, and we have Tato Ethiopians. Guys, it's Gold Rush. Which, wait, well, no, no, it's, it's not Gold Rush. It is not Gold Rush. It is Golden Pit. I got real excited when I saw the minimap. Still, Golden Pit is interesting. It's an inverted Gold Rush without the wolves, though, which is really sad. Um, Jordan 23. Obviously one of the best players in the world for quite some time, dethroning Viper two, three years ago. They were neck and neck though. And, well now, Jordan has come back and he has risen. Take a look at this. One moment. He has risen. Look at his winning streak. 13 game winning streak. For a guy who was 1800 when he came back. He did 2364. He is getting back to top form. And it's a player that I spoke with in Germany at Gamescom. And I got to speak with him when I wasn't on stage. I was talking to him about uh, the performance of Leary and Viper specifically at the time. He thinks that, he said, and I quote, in one year, Leary will be able to beat Viper. Exactly what he said. Not saying it would happen, but he is saying in one year, Leary would be able to beat Viper. He's very impressed with Leary's speed. And Leary's awareness, and he just thought Leary just needed more games underneath his belt. Now, Jordan doesn't know the new civilizations, but he was very excited to be there, be amongst all the new HC civs, be amongst all the top players, and he wants to, that's his arena, where he wants to be. So, this is him trying that out versus Tato, a player who got third in Germany, and another player who was great to talk to at that event. So we have Burmese versus Ethiopians, and truthfully, I wish there would have been more World of Low Kingdoms leading up to a HD tournament because then I would have familiarized myself more with the civs and the possibilities. But we'll see what happens. Uh, Jordan, first game of the day for him, so a little bit of rust sending five out to wood. Gonna bring in the boar. Darth Nader with the sub. Thank you for the subscription. I hope you're having a nice day. I'm um, pretty similar to Gold Rush in a lot of ways. So first of all, Gold Rush, if you're not familiar with it, is normally a hill in the middle, and then there's a lot of woo-woo-woos. Now this is a pit, which changes things dramatically, but back at the starting bases, it's very similar. Just five tiles of gold, four tiles of stone, and then I guess there's another four tiler here. And I think the meta will be similar too. There might be a Drush from Tato, um, maybe scouts from Jordan, but a lot of walling to secure your base, and then you're gonna make a push out to the middle at some point. Now for Jordan, this isn't too far away. Obviously could TC this quite easily, but the problem is for both players is there's a hill surrounding you. So if you go to the middle, you better be damn sure you have army. You better be damn sure you can hold it because your opponent's gonna have a hill advantage when they fight you. So I think I think you need to have a little bit more control to go to the middle now because in the past you could go to the middle with a little bit less army and out micro and use your hill advantage. Now it's different. But yeah, Tato's map, he could easily wall this area here to the edge of the map, build barracks on the front wall here if he wants to do so. And Tato with Ethiopians is, I mean, it's T90 hacks because he likes the micro with the faster firing archers the Ethiopians have, and he's so good at it. Um, you may recall a game six months ago where Tato was behind versus Doubt and used Ethiopian Arbalest to micro down everything that Doubt had. Uh, somebody asked, who was it? Chat is loving too much. Uh, who is currently the best player, both in your opinion and proven wise? Well, Viper. Yeah, Viper's the best player. But the thing is, this has been my experience. Viper gets dangerously close to losing. And then the individual who was dangerously close to beating him ends up going inactive. So Viper is the most active too. And, or one of the most active players in the top five. So I feel, I really hope Leary and I really hope Jordan continue at a high level. Because... Uh, in Maldives, this is before I started really getting involved, it was a LAN tournament, and it was a lot of controversy behind it afterwards, but regardless, it was a big deal. Eight Age of Empires 2 players were there, and so, again, some of those players inactive now, but 
Yo and Viper went head to head, and I'm sure someone can show you the VODs it's on the Voobly YouTube. But it was a best of five for the final at the LAN, and Yo was up 2 0. And then Viper came back to win 3 2. And then in Germany, Viper was. It was a best of three final, and Leary was up 1 0, and Viper came back to win 2 1. So my point is, Viper, but it's not like he's immortal. Because, well, why not Macron backslash underscore underscore slash Macron? We're going to see man in arms from Jordan here. Mr. Link, thank you for the 12 bucks, 59 cents. Also, Duke Igor of Barcelona, welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you for the support today, guys. Like I said earlier, half off subs to the Twitch stream. And also, as always, if you happen to have Amazon Prime and it's linked with Twitch, you can get Twitch Prime, which is a free sub. There's the walls from Tato. Uh, Tato. Uh, there's his Josh. Okay, he has found Jordan's walls. Tato drushing. Jordan's going man at arms. I honestly don't agree with the strategy choice here. But again, he might not be as familiar as Tato is with the maps and stuff. Because I said it before, Jordan probably has the skill in standard AOC. He, of course, hasn't been playing as often over the past year because he just came back. And he also doesn't know the Stivs. So the Drushes will basically do nothing. But you always need to Drush just in case your opponent is defensively in. It does cause a little bit of harassment, I guess, to, to stop them from walling up and whatnot. But they could have easily just full walled and fast castled, I think. And Jordan's going for man at arms. And Tata will know that because, well, they're going to be on his doorstep shortly. And there's a hole here, which Jordan will find. But he should run into TC fire. Tato's not going to get in. But Tato doesn't have a scout at home, so he might miss out on this. But basically what Tato's doing is he's gone for the drush. He's added extra villagers. And he's going to try and get to the castle age as fast as possible. And he will need food. And these villagers are going to run away. Because the man at arms are here, but she should be safe. It will be annoying because he'll have to continue to repair the palisades. But resource wise, Tato is going to get 100 extra food once he hits the next stage and 100 extra gold, which he has accounted for as his Ethiopian bonus. Tato, don't let her die. Tato, don't next. let her die. Stream. This is someone's daughter. Our stream. <laughs> yeah, she is going to die. But Tato, perfect resources. Messy from him to lose that bill. But he's going to fast castle while Jordan, you know, again, he went up so early, he's not going to be able to deal with the Castle Age army all that easily. Uh, a man at arms was a questionable decision, in my opinion. Kyram, thank you for 10 months, and the 24 hour stream will come eventually, guys. A uh, Drush is Dark Age Rush, yes. Uh, man at arms, really, there's no term except man at arms. You can say M at A. You're lazy. Tato needs a house. Oh, he's trying to sneak a bill out? Okay. I think he's trying to bring his scout in. Tato's in a better position. It's been a little bit messy. Uh, Jordan, though, has 230 food. And I think he should go for defensive powers now. I think Jordan should. Go to stone and go defensive towers because Tato will probably go crossbow, as you can see. Very, I, I still am surprised Jordan went for the strategy because it, the maps are similar to Gold Rush, but let's see. So I think it was more around 15 subs today. So hopefully September is helping helping you guys out with the new subs. I know we have a lot of new people coming to the stream. This is a beautiful move from Tato. Just delete a hole in the wall. Send the archers out. Make sure Jordan can't attack me. Jordan is scouting for that. But the crazy thing about Ethiopians is every time you hit the next stage, you get 100 food and 100 gold. So Tato might not have the resources now, but he will have the resources to get crossbow and probably Bodkinero soon after once he hits the castle age in a moment. 
So that coupled with their faster firing archers, coupled with their free pikemen upgrade, makes them my favorite expansion civilization. I think they're I mean I don't know if the word OP is appropriate, but certainly a very, very strong civ. Uh, Jordan, I will say his economy is quite strong, and he's going to go skirmishers. He really doesn't want to have to build a tower, but I think he'll force one up once he sees the archers from Tato. So after Man at Arms, Jordan's castle time, sub 19 minutes, which is pretty good, considering they did, well, they did kill a villager, but it wasn't as effective as it should have been, and there was no follow-up feudal attack. So this is where Jordan can struggle. He needs this gold. He does not have the other gold. Yeah, the other gold's here. He's gonna try and go for Elite Skirmisher, but he doesn't have the resources. And if he tries to fight this in the Feudal Age, or even in the Castle Age, it'll be very difficult because Tato has these faster firing crossbows. A Tato kind of focused on this villager, and T90 Babe's gonna dodge away. Jordan will probably have to vacate the area, leave the wood line. Tato has gained himself a lot of crucial map control. And for now, Pato is sitting pretty, building a second town center and sending crossbows over to this side. This might not look like a devastating attack, but it really is. What does Tato see? He sees, okay, he ran from this wood line here, and he's preparing to fight me on this side. Let's send a small group of crossbows to sit behind the other wood line. I don't even think he's fully scouted that yet, but he might look for it, and that would be so devastating to Jordan because Jordan would have to decide where to go. And he also wouldn't be able to collect the wood, of course. And Jordan getting an elite skirmisher is actually up against Tato's Drush now. He will lose some of these skirmishers. And Tato has done a lot of damage with not very many units. However, oh, look at that. He just spotted that villager. Now he spots the chopped wood. We'll probably stand here in a moment. So Jordan has gone full defense boom mode. Two more TCs right away. Just praying that his economy can be on par with Tato's. Tato's going to continue to add military. And remember, getting the middle is so important. So two TCs for Tato for the time being. I think he placed another one, right? Where does his resources go? Yep. Oh, university. That makes sense. And Tato going to microwave with his crossbows. Didn't do that much harassment on the wood line, honestly. But he will do harassment on this wood line. And that's exactly where Jordan wants to be. No bod can arrow for Jordan. I don't think he has the resources for it. Yeah, he's trying to keep his town centers producing villagers. He does not have the resources for it. So, I, I expect Tata to try and micro down units. And Jordan also, because he built this town center, he doesn't have the resources for a siege workshop. And this could be devastating now. And Jordan is microing with less numbers. And Tata has the faster firing units with more range. There's so many villagers here. One villager will go down for sure. And Tato has been on top of Jordan so far in this first game. Again, I think Tato using the experience with his Civ and now using his Civ's available micro speed and just dipping and dodging. Jordan did a good job not to lose any skirms there. The vill count is actually even, believe it or not. And that's really what separates the the best from the best is being able to deal with pressure and Jordan has done that so far. Is the middle all visible? I think both players did scout that, yeah. Teenage and Jordan? Please coming in with skirms. Calendar or something for your streaming schedule. I really catch you late. Um, DL... I do have it below the stream every week. I mean, I don't know if it'd be any easier for people to visit a Google Calendar versus visiting the stream. I also add it on the Discord which you can access via mobile, uh, or you can access on the PC. So I feel like that's a really good method. However, I also know that a lot of people don't look at it. So I do my very best to update it there, and uh, all that information's there. But uh, if there's a change, I'm sure the community will let me know. Uh, Koala also donated another 200 bits. Said, what time will we be finishing tonight? I don't know. Let's see. Make it easy. Maybe two to three hours I'll be finished. I think we're going to do a long stream today. We've had good momentum lately. And um, some big changes come in as well. So I, I think that you might be seeing some more streams in the future, guys. Had to research ballistics. 
And he's actually going to be trapped here by these elite skirmishers. No way he's getting out alive. Is Jordan going to clean up these crossbows? Tato running out of areas to do damage now, but his economy is ahead. And I think he's having fun microing, man. And trying to micro down this one last skirmisher on one HP. Drools, thank you for the subscription. Enjoy the benefits, man. There's a Tato TC in the middle. And Maganel is exactly what Tato needed. I think Tato has played this one wonderfully thus far. Jordan needs to get some map control and push out. He still has that gold, but that won't last forever and he needs to think ahead. Alright, this is a fight that Tato shouldn't take against Elite Skirms, but with a Maganel that changes so much. And Tato <laughs> still looking to micro down the weak skirmishers because he has that firing speed. The TC here, which means a lot of gold on the way for Tato. And Jordan has no Siege Workshop of his own. He is very heavy on stone though. And no, that was not an intentional rhyme. But this is what I foresee happening. Okay, Jordan recognizes he's behind with map control. So he's been heavy on stone so we can get a castle up to get some map control back. Obviously, the middle is going to be a huge area for both players. Uh, Jordan also going for a Siege Workshop and splitting away from the Maganel from Tato. So he can fight this now. He's going to need to run. Um, he was building a Siege Workshop here, and I think he really needs to get one. There we go. Because if he gets a favorable Maganel shot, maybe kills Tato's Maganel, he can fight Tato's crossbows. And then he can build a castle in the middle, which he might be going for now. Oh my gosh, he's going for it. Look at that, deleted some of this, sending out the villagers. This could be a game changer. Now this fight's still huge, but this game is a lot closer than I thought it would be after Jordan's start. Credit to Jordan's skill level to be able to keep it here. Tato has seen what exactly? He will see the castle. He's sending the military back. This could easily be a doubt castle. Oh my gosh, I think it is. He has skirmishers, but Tato notices this and this could be yeah i think jordan will probably lose everything here it's a good attempt okay he's only gonna lose three villagers uh two more are running in which he's probably forgotten about uh, tato has figured this out and a maganel mic for both players tato winning the maganel war he also is gonna fire on the skirmishers decent split from jordan to micro that down but i think all in all tato has a huge lead now that he's denied that castle he has his own Maganel for Skirms again. I think Tato should invest in more Maganels, and he is doing that. And now he's going to add in Knights. Jordan is going to commit to this. Now, if he micros down the Maganel, currently Tato's army is out of position. And Tato recognizes that he's going to go for the Vils. Jordan needs to get this castle up. If he doesn't get the castle up, I think he's in trouble. And he's actually leaving the area now. And it will make it more difficult for him as Tato's going Knights. But if Jordan gets it up on this part of the hill it'll give him easier access to take fights easier access to the middle but yeah tattoo's firing uphill with his maganel while jordan has one on the hill um i'm very surprised that that was even i thought tattoo would lose his and what kind of range does this man have on his maganels a tattoo with a huge shot here now as well all over jordan 23 jordan trying to micro as much as possible he didn't get any maganel here this one's being repaired and Tato taking a huge, huge lead in this game. Wow. Well, I, I don't know what the answer is for Jordan now. Uh, Arambai, obviously, very strong. They're basically like the expansion elite Mangadai. I liked Jordan's decision. I, I really did. I honestly feel as if his skirmishers weren't back here. If he had his skirmishers here, then he would have gotten that castle up. But it was just bad timing for him. And he was probably thinking Tata was distracted. But in reality, he didn't have enough in the middle to allow him to get that castle up. Let's see if Jordan can get a favorable, favorable Maganel shot for once versus Tato. And Tato got him micro away. And he's going to move in. If Jordan balls enough to continue to try and use his skirmishers to micro down Maganels. It didn't work out for him one time. He sees another Maganel coming in from Tato. We've watched a lot of games today. There is such a huge difference in what we're seeing now. These guys are so good. Nice Maganel shot from Tato, but he 
Is there a risk of losing his Maganels to the Arambai? Tato's still doing a very good job here. He's lost his Maganel to Gordon. Excuse me. Um, all in all, pretty close game. I think the Arambai could turn it around if they can mass now for Jordan 23. Tato's going for what looks to be an all-in or maybe an aggressive castle age attack. As he's adding plus two knights, he has the crossbows already. Microing away yet again from that Jordan Maganel, and with the knights, he will take out that Maganel. And with knights, he will also have good engagements against the elite skirmishers. So rip the Maganel for Jordan 23. He has a lot of his eco here. He's running away from the gold. Keep in mind, Jordan does not have the middle gold. There's a castle from Tato he's just spotted. He'll kill some bills, but that castle will go up. Tato seems to have everything covered now. Running in again with the crossbows. He'll kill a few villagers. Jordan has to address this. This has been a great game. Especially from Tato, who spotted the castle in the middle. Building his own castle now. Added the knights for the skirmishers. And will dip and dodge with his crossbows while his knights do some work. Uh, still, Jordan will get a decent cleanup here. I think the Iron Bye will eventually kill the knights. And the crossbows are already dead. But very impressive game from Tato who has full control of this pit. Jordan has resources. He still has gold to take, but he needs a big fight here. Now, what Jordan could do, if he's able to get up to the Imperial Age earlier, he could go for Trebs, and he could push down and get this back. So this is still very much a game, especially when Jordan is only 10 builds behind. And Tato has, well, invested into a ram now, so he's going heavier into Castle Age. So Tato has to be careful not to overinvest. Especially now that there's more Arambai, the knights are not going to be near as strong. Now, Arambai are kind of a weird unit because every shot is not accurate, but they're so strong at 18 base attack that it's definitely worth making them. Uh, nice micro from Tata, but again, I feel like it is not going to be enough. The Arambai will kill the knights, and then the skirmishers will kill his crossbows. Tata looking to do as much damage as possible with his Maganel, and honestly... He's done a great job with his Maganels all game, but our Maganels going to be as effective now that Aaron Bayer is so mobile. Well, we'll see. Pretty good micro from Tato. I thought he'd lose a little bit more, a little bit faster. Tato is getting Wheelbarrow, and he has the stone for another castle if need be. I think he's trying to get to Imp because he knows Jordan will get to Imp, and Jordan is going to click first at this rate. Uh, by the way, Drunk Goat, welcome to the stream, man. I think you just got home from work, right? Happy to have you here. Jordan still on stone, yes, so he could go for another castle. Which would mean two castles making Trebs, two castles making Arambai. I don't know. I mean, Tato's gonna click up now. But this is a very close game here, guys. And Tato's clicked up with a safe MTC. He had stone for a castle early. Oh, okay, he's building it here. I like this castle a lot from Tato. It gives him access to the right-hand side to raid. But more importantly, I think his treb will be on even ground with the castle of Jordan 23. Jordan's gonna have the hill. It's not the best position for Tato, sure. It's a better position because he's been collecting this gold, but he could easily be cleaned up in the middle because he is going to be fighting uphill and Jordan will have the hill advantage. So two castles for both players. They'll count dead even almost. And Tata needs to make a decision of what he wants to do. He's going to go into those arbalests. Meanwhile, Jordan adding barracks. Uh, is he going to go Elite Skirmisher Halb, or what is his choice? Okay. Champion, Kondo, Halb. I don't know, I think Jordan can bring this game back. He needs to save the wood, so he's able to go with the Trebuchet. Jordan has enough military to defend for now. 
And Tato's actually sending out some of his armor to the right, so it's not like he can defend in the middle. Tato doesn't have anything here. And look at that 400 wood a moment ago for Jordan. He would probably make Trebs right away. Treb, Treb, there you go. And a monk has gone down for Jordan, and he's going to click wall to keep his villagers safe from these crossbows. The Tato, still not an imp, guys. He does have stone to repair his castle, and he will need to do that. Spirit of the Lull. What's up, man? Nice username. Jordan has played this one perfectly after his losses. He's going to protect the right side with skirmishers. He's going to go with Trebs. He'll probably take this castle off from Tato. If he has the gold. He actually only has 130 gold here. So he needs to get to the middle now. Tato's going for a siege workshop. Capped Ram. Chain Barding and Pikeman now for Jordan 23. So... Jordan's looking to push in. Dangerously close for both players. You never know how this is going to turn out. Another castle being built. Ah, oh, this is interesting. I feel like Tato would have been better off repairing this castle, but there's so many traps, he's just going to build another one. He will have two of his own traps that he will need to protect versus the Iron Bai. And Tato losing the score lead now after losing the crossbows, or some of the crossbows on the right, which are now Arbalest. And Jordan going to have to use his own traps to attack the traps of Tato's, maybe considering running in with the Arambai to pick these off. Be so worth it now, I think. And Tato's going for Siege Ram, so he's not going to hold onto these castles long term. He will need to be careful to build houses because he can get housed. But I think he recognizes he could lose his castles. He would only need them for traps. So let's go Siege Ram and Arbalest. That's probably what Tato's thinking. Plenty of repairs from Jordan. He wants to hold the hill. And remember, Jordan does not have much gold. He needs to get to the middle. He's selling wood and food for his gold income. And Tato's trying to run away with the Trebs. And he's also trying to get repairs in. Uh, is Jordan going to commit underneath this castle? Because these are very weak trebuchets. I think he should get one. But the repair villagers are changing a lot here. Look at this man repairing. Actually, Tato keeping all of his trebs up, taking the score lead back. Jordan's making a desperate push to the middle now because he needs gold. He doesn't expect there to be enough military from Tato. Tato can reposition the trebs, attack that castle. The repairs were huge. Sea drams are a meat shield. He just needs to starve Jordan 23, and maybe he has done it for just long enough. Both players using their trebs actually at the same time. Not much of an answer to Siege Ram for Jordan. He has a few pikemen. Arambai are not that good against Siege Rams. So he's, he's forced to repair. And of course the Arbalests are there for Tato as well. And he's sending in two Siege Rams. And he could go after the Trebs. So I think at least one of these castles is a goner. But potentially both. And I think both will be a goner for Jordan. Far too many Siege Rams from Tato. But Jordan is on full defensive mode. He doesn't have castle. Or, sorry, he doesn't have gold, and he is about to lose both of his castles. The Tato just showing you what you can do with Siege Rams, or what you can do with map control. If both castles go down, and Tato taking a huge fight there. I honestly didn't think... I wasn't that convinced, but he did the right thing. If he didn't go for Siege Ram, if he just went for a straight-up fight, he would have been up against Skirmishers and Arambai. Jordan also had the Treb advantage for a while. He just lost one. That was awesome. That was awesome from Tato. And now he just needs to starve Jordan. Jordan doesn't have any gold. Uh, Jordan still just using villagers versus the siege rams. And Tato has those Ethiopian archers doing work for him. Ethiopians are a very strong civ and Tato is a strong player. He's utilizing the extra gold and also if you didn't notice he's raiding the economy from Jordan. These aren't even elite Arambai. So they're not going to be as good as they could be. And there's more Arbless up here as well. I didn't see this Villager Massacre. It was actually a quick wall with Siege Workshops, I think, from Jordan. Because he didn't want units to get in there. But look on the front. Jordan trying to use the lead skirmishers. Getting close and kill the Arbless. Still, I think Tazza could lose this entire army. And he has the gold to replenish it. He's even sending in Showtails to clean up the skirms. It's great to see a unique unit like this used. Because, let's be honest, Showtails are not always that viable. Tato 
played that one wonderfully. But Jordan did too. I didn't think we'd get this far into the game. That's what top level Age of Empires is, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan went man at arms. He still ended up giving Tato a game. Tato took advantage of his early crossbow um, numbers, I guess. He took advantage of the military numbers and the map control he had, and then he held the middle. And that's the, that's the cliff notes on it, but that game was exceptional. Jordan could have easily pushed in here and taken this gold. I think if Tato went anything but Seedram, he would have died. If he went Trebs, he probably would have lost them, and he obviously lost some castles as well. So Seedram was the best move because it's a meat shield, and because Jordan didn't have any melee to stop it. And, you know, you didn't... You weren't sure for a while. You were very uneasy. You didn't know what was going to happen with Tato. But he got Capram. He had the eco for Seedram. And he was cool and calm under pressure in that game. Really cool game there. Really cool game. Uh, Vihal, you have missed three hours of the stream. But that was the first game between these guys. And they will play another one again. Uh, if you are watching from YouTube for the first time, say hello. Everybody say hello to YouTube because that one's going up there. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube to like the video and check out the live stream link and that schedule is below the stream every single week. So, units killed. Uh, here's the eco stats. Look at the gold difference. Again, I'm surprised that Tato even got, I mean, sorry, Jordan even got that far without the gold. Here's the technology stats for you guys. Better map exploration from Tato. I think the castle time is what really did it. That's a big difference. And Vilhai. Very, very cool game. Also on Twitch, it is September. So if you're here on the live stream now, or if you're going to be joining from Twitch, not only can you use Amazon Prime to sub for free, but if you're doing a regular sub, it's actually half off for the first sub. So just 2 bucks and 50 cents to support the stream. I don't get supported any less. It's a really good way to get involved here. All right, kids. We are going to have another game. I need to get water. 